Begin by safely raising and supporting your vehicle and removing the rear wheels. Need additional assistance with that task? Please follow the link provided at the end of this video. Place a wide drip pan to catch any fluid during the removal process. The rear brake line, red arrow, connects to a mount in the chassis, blue arrow, and to a mount on the wheel carrier, green arrow. There is a small hard line from that clip to the caliper. The factory line sits in two grooves in the mount that correspond with two notches in the line. This keeps the line from turning while you unscrew the nut on the hard line, red arrow. You want to use the right tool for the job and that tool is a 10 millimeter flared nut wrench that is designed to grasp the nut on five sides. The nuts on the hard lines are easy to strip. Do yourself a favor and use the right tool. Once you break this connection open, brake fluid will escape. It is slippery but most important, deadly to your paint. Do not get any on your paint. Separate the flex line from the hard line on the caliper. It's a really good idea to cap the hard line while the flex line is off, red arrow. This will help protect the line, stop debris from getting in, and keep fluid from getting out. You need to disconnect the wear sensor from the electrical line. Release the electrical connector by using a flathead screwdriver and rotating to release the clip, red arrow. With the wear sensor disconnected and the wires loosened, remove the two T55 torque caliper mounting bolts, red arrows. You will need to replace these bolts with new ones for installation. They are single use only. During installation, these bolts will be need to be torqued to 65 newton meters or 48 foot pounds. With everything disconnected, you can now remove the caliper from the rotor. The pads may still be pressed up against the rotor. You can either use a flathead screwdriver to separate the pads from the rotor, and I only recommend this if you are replacing the rotors too, or lifting from the bottom and wiggle the caliper side to side against the rotor to compress the pistons back into the caliper. You can now move the caliper to a flat work surface. Use a set of pliers to remove the old wear sensors. If your wear sensors have activated, you cannot reuse them. The sensor connects to the inboard and outer pad on the front, red arrows. You're going to be pushing the pistons back into the calipers. This will cause the brake fluid in the caliper to push out of the hard brake line. If you have a rubber cover on the end of the hard line, red arrow, you will need to take this off for the brake fluid to escape. Have a rag ready to catch any brake fluid. Use a brake pad spreader and compress the pads outwards, pushing the pistons back into the caliper. If you don't have a spreader, you can use a C-clamp. The pads can now be pulled out of the caliper. The pads or pad retaining plates are stuck to the pistons. Use a trim removal tool to help separate the pads using care around the pistons and dust boots. If you need to reuse the hard brake lines on the top, green arrows, or the hard line that runs to the flex line, red arrow, use a 10 mm flared nut wrench to remove the nuts. You will also need a 10 mm socket to remove the bolt, yellow arrow, also holding the hard line. The nuts on the hard lines are easily stripped and require a flared nut wrench to remove without stripping. If you need to reuse the bleed nipples, red arrows, use a flathead screwdriver to undo the rubber caps and then use an 11 mm flared nut wrench to remove the bleed nipples. There is a metal retaining clip, red arrow, inside the caliper that is held in by a friction fit. Use a pry bar to pop out the retaining clip. Installation is the reverse of removal. Torque the caliper bolts to 65 newton meters or 48 foot pounds. Torque all bracket mounting hardware to 10 newton meters or 7.5 foot pounds. When reinstalling, you must bleed the brake system. Do not attempt to drive the vehicle until you have completely bled the brakes. Please follow the link provided at the end of this video for more instructions on brake bleeding. Make sure you remove any dust buildup inside of the caliper and then apply a small amount of anti-squeal to the back of your brake pads. Brake pads must be properly bedded in or broken in. 
break in your pads according to the manufacturer of the type of pads you purchased. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel and check out another video in this series.